It's Amy from LittleDragonBaking.com and today I wanted to talk about some really neat ways that you can customize your pie crusts. So I started getting really obsessed with pie crust art when I found some really amazing pie artists on Instagram. But as a beginner, I certainly wasn't able to jump right in and start creating intricate scenes. So what I'm going to do today is show you what I discovered was a really good starting point for creating pie crusts that are customized and a little bit more flashy, but also don't require hours and hours of intricate work. So today I'm going to run through uh, how to kind of make your pie crust a little more fancy and customized with some really, really basic techniques that are great for people starting or people who just don't have that much time to sit down for hours. Um, so what I'm going to use today are some tools you probably already have at home, which is always a nice perk. Uh, I'm just going to use a toothpick, some basic uh, food grade paint brushes. So now I bought these and you can see they're Wilton, so I don't use them for anything else but food and baking. Uh, and some food color. I also have some Wilton food colors. These are gel and I'll mix them with clear vanilla extract when the time comes to get the right consistency. Uh, I've also read that you can use vodka, but clear vanilla is what I've always used. Uh, and Another thing that I like to do when I'm trying to practice a new technique is do it in mini versions so I'm not stuck with 10 pies. Um, this also allows you to just kind of practice more without buying a ton of ingredients. So one standard pie crust recipe uh, makes three of these little mini pies and it's a great way to practice so that's what I'll be doing today. I don't use store-bought crusts only because I've heard that they tend to crack so I make my own pie crust. It doesn't take that long. So what you're going to do before you get started decorating is make whatever pie crust recipe you like, roll it out flat on a cookie sheet, and you're going to need to freeze it for at least an hour. This is important if you plan on kind of being able to work with it a little easier and it keeps your design sharp, especially if you're doing any cutout shapes. It'll really help when you get it in the oven. Yesterday, I forgot this very important point and my pie crust was turning to mush in my hands. It was not fun to work with, so please plan ahead and make sure you have that hour of freezing time before you start your decorating. All right, I'm going to bring out the pie crust in just a second and we'll get started. All right, here we have the little pre-cut pie tops that I've frozen on my flat cookie sheet and I just wanted to show you that when I rolled it out I put little uh, bottoms in and I'll store these in the fridge while I work but I wanted to give you a chance to just kind of see what the other half of the pie looked like. So here's how I'm going to start. I have my handy dandy toothpick and of course there are special tools that you can use but I've never found the need to purchase anything more than a box of toothpicks. Uh, and what I'm going to show you is how to just create some basic letters. If you want to customize a pie with just your initial, it's um, a nice way. So we will add color to this, but to start, what I do is I always create an outline of my letter. And this really helps when you go to paint. And all you're going to do is drag it very lightly. You don't want to go all the way through the pie crust. I have found using straight lines and block letters is easier for starting. So I'm just going to draw an M. You can see. Now another thing that I found kind of elevates just basic lettering is adding the little feet. Um, if you know anything about fonts, this is a uh, serif font has the little feet and sans serif font has no feet. That's why it's called sans serif. So I always find, and you can see my M's a little crooked here because I'm filming. Bear with me. I'm sure when you're doing this at home you're paying a little more attention. But when you add the little feet, it also helps you kind of line things up because you can take your toothpick and make sure that it's in line like this to make sure your letters aren't uneven. And then you can just make a f another little foot right across from where you started. And this is going to give you a guideline when you go in with your color. Um, and it makes painting a lot easier. And you can kind of widen it by just wiggling the toothpick and making it a little bit wider, kind of rolling it out. Uh, if you don't, and you know, you'll have to smooth down the edges and make sure that kind of you can just take your finger and kind of pat it down there. 
Um, and we'll neaten this up, but this is usually how I start my lettering. And we'll grab, go in again with a paintbrush and kind of make it look a lot nicer. Right now it's just a basic outline. All right, we're back. And as you can see, I tried to kind of even out my M a little bit and still isn't perfect. But one of the most important parts of doing this with a toothpick first is that you can kind of just smooth it back out and try again. So that's why I really recommend going in with the toothpick first so that if you mess up, you're not stuck with it. So then uh, I'm just gonna take, so you can see here, I've mixed some brown food coloring with a little bit of clear vanilla. And it's important that it's the clear kind. Uh, it's a little thin for my liking, but you can easily adjust by adding more of the gel if it's too thin. And I'm just gonna go right in that little groove that I made, which is nice and easy. So you're making this part a lot easier. Oh, it kind of went out of the line. So like I said, this takes some practice. I'm not very good at doing this while filming yet. So I promise your attempt will probably look a lot neater than mine. Uh, also, I find that it's easier when it's thicker. So this is a little bit thinner and it tends to be a little harder to work with, at least in my experience. So what I would normally do is go back and thicken this up before I go any further. Uh, I will say that I chose a brown color because I used to do black and it was a little stark against the golden crust. Um, I'm not sure people like to see a big bold black stamp on their pie so I'm trying to go with a little bit of a lighter um, color with the brown so it looks a little better on my finished pie. Uh, so I will check back in after I've made a little more progress and give some more tips about how to paint in your line. But for now you can see how it's already a little bit smudged. I, I did notice that it was a little thinner consistency than I would have liked. And so I'm going to have to go back and adjust that a little bit before going on. We're going to have a brief interlude where I warn you that I have no idea how this happened. Um, it's just food coloring. But check your hands. Uh, after you pour your food and mix your food coloring and wash them because I had no idea somehow I had gotten red food coloring all over my hands and the second you touch that pie crust it will smear with whatever's on your fingers. So please after you mix your colors and get them all ready do check your hands and wash them or you will have probably smeared colors all over at some point. All right we're back as you can see I have finished my M and I wanted to give a few more little tips here. You can see right here is where I smudged it with the red, which kind of came out pink. Uh, what I did was I took a few little blobs of clean and I kind of put it over it. You can still see it's not a perfect fix, uh, but I didn't really fuss with it too much. I just kind of covered up the worst of the pink. Uh, in the future, I would rather just have clean hands, but that can be a fix if you really don't have time to uh, start over. Another thing that I wanted to address is that this M, the coloring isn't perfect. I find that pies have a little more forgiveness if you want to go for a rustic look, which is great for beginners. Uh, when it actually bakes up, it's not going to be as noticeable. It's not going to be lying smooth. It's going to have a little bit of a golden color around it. And basically my point is that pies are forgiving and a little easier to kind of say it's rustic instead of just not perfect. Another point is that I don't know if anyone's noticed at home, but my M is not perfectly on center. And what I find is that instead of despairing over the fact that this is not perfect, I found a way to kind of offset that. As you can see here, I'm creating a little heart and that I cut out with just a basic paring knife, which is somewhere. All right, but just assume that it's a basic paring knife. And before you make a little cutout, you're gonna want this to be very cold. So I put this in the freezer. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna be hard to get out. So what I'm gonna do to avoid, so I'm just gonna pop my little heart out and then I'm gonna give it a little color so it pops and I'm gonna put it right next to that M to kind of add a little dimension. As you can see right now, my M looks a little plain and sad, but I'm gonna, give this a little color and I'm purposely going to color this not on top of my pie crust. I'm going to color it separately so that I don't end up smearing more pink all over the place. All right, as you can see here, I've got my little colored heart and my M and 
pretty soon. We're going to put that right on top of the pie crust and see how that looks and I'll show you how it all bakes up. Right now this is a really simple design but I think this is good for someone who's just looking for a little bit of flair and you can add whatever shapes you want um, and you can do um, as much kind of frills around it. I'm just showing a very basic version that you can get with a to toothpick, food coloring, and a paring knife. And uh, when you want to stick your little heart on or whatever little shape you want, you can just take a little bit of water on your fingertip and dab it onto the crust and then put your cutout right on top of that and it'll kind of stick it on there. All right, here we have the pies ready to go into the oven and you can see my M pie, which I ran through with you. These other two were made using the same technique. And I wanted to show you, I'm going to point this out despite the fact that it really annoys me. As you can see the smudge where I had food coloring and tried to cover it up, it's pretty noticeable uh, comparison to these two nice clean pies which I'm much happier with. This is just to reiterate, be really careful when working with food coloring. I tend to end up, it's still on my hands even though I've washed them and it will get on everything. Uh, so please, you know, be really careful with that food coloring. Maybe you're not as clumsy as I am, but for those of us who uh, are on the clumsy side, it can really uh, mess up a nice clean pie crust. So here we have some other designs and I wanted to take a minute to mention that you will have to score your pie crusts. I'm making fruit pies, so that's really crucial. So sometimes keep that in mind. You can see some work better with the designs than other. My M, my scores are a little awkward, which I didn't think about. So maybe draw out your design first and keep those in mind. Whereas my yay pie, they worked really, really well in that like circular starburst. Uh, so I'm really happy with that. So a little bit of thought can go a long way. And you can see I brush them lightly with an egg wash. I use a mix of egg wash and milk and my only tip here is to be really careful around your lettering. I try very hard not to go too close because it'll smudge and smear. So when you do that egg wash, be careful. All right, and I'm gonna pop these into the oven and I will show you a very quick result when we come back. All right, here are our finished pies and some more lessons learned. After all my hard work, as you can see, we had a pie explosion. This is because I wasn't keeping a close enough eye on my pies to see when it started bubbling up. And clearly it got quite a ways. So this doesn't make for a very pretty pie. I got lucky with my M pie, but as you can see, we've had a lot of overflow. My Hello Summer pie, fortunately also had some uh, explosive juices going on and you can see there's a lot of leakage on my pan which is why you always bake your fruit pies on a pan. I would have loved to show you an end with pristine pies but I can tell you right now that we will all learn from my mistake. Keep an eye on those pies when they get close to that finishing time so that you can catch it before a disaster happens. Isn't that just so sad? All right, well, unfortunately, it's not quite an Instagram-worthy pie, but I stand by my advice in the previous part of this video, and now you know definitely keep an eye on those pies. Don't let this happen. All right, guys, until next time.